we're going to play a clip that I'm a little bit torn on whether to even play it because I don't like the message it sends to kids out there. And I know that sounds a little melodramatic, but listen to what he had to say about how close he was to playing in the playoffs. And then I'll explain on the back end okay. why it makes me just a little queasy as to the message it sends generally to aspiring football players. Have a listen. Were you close to playing in the playoffs, or was that not a possibility? I I am not not sure. Um, I was going through my process um, with with Kyle and uh, just trying to do everything I could to get better. Um, but at any point, whenever you know they the team you know Mike or or Greer would have approached me and asked me if I were ready, there's no question, no doubt in my mind that I would have would have stepped up to the plate and answered the call. See, this is troubling from the standpoint of the culture of football. And we hear from time to time when an established, entrenched star quarterback taps out of a game and says, I may have a concussion. Yeah. Ben Roethlisberger did that in 2014. And people thought that, oh, well, this is the, the pivot point And everybody in football now is going to suddenly put their hand in the air when they think, no, no. There's only a small handful of guys who have no concern whatsoever about saying, I can't play anymore today, and I have no qualms about my backup entering the game in place of me because I know I'm not going to get Wally pipped. I mean, part, and this is, the, this is the very delicate balance. You want to be ready to answer the call, but when you're talking about brain health, there's no call to be answered. This isn't about trying to fight through a shoulder injury. This isn't about trying to find a way to run on a hamstring that has been tweaked and you're going to do what you can to gut it out. This isn't about playing in pain. This is about knowing when you should not put a helmet on and go out on the football field. That's what made me queasy about that because it goes to the very culture of football, and it's something that the NFL and every other level of the sport is still going to have a hard time dealing with yeah. because guys want to play. That's Especially right. Especially guys who have yet to establish themselves yep. on that short list of guys who can voluntarily walk away from a game to get checked out for a concussion or stay out of another game because he has a concussion and watch somebody else take his job. Yeah, exactly. All those factors play into it, 100%. Let alone, I mean, it's just, again, it's it's football players want to play football. Back to, like, yes, they're psychos in a good way. This is their passion. This is what they want to do, right? So it just, it's, 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 it is. It's hard, right? I mean, we just talked about a guy yesterday – uh, on that same very field that Tua and we had that scary moment, moment was dead on the field. And he's like, I'm coming back to play. Yup, my heart stopped in a game and I don't give a damn. I'm coming to play because I love football and that's what I do. So it is, it's it's a it's a it's a you know, a gift and a curse there from a football player. You know, Damar Hamlin, Tua Tagovailoa, I was in the situation you were in with my spleen. We we're 0 2, right? Things were bad. You know, I was just starting to establish myself and added on to that. I was a psycho and the son of Phil Sims and, you know, watched him play for Bill Parcells and suck it up and go play football. That is the culture. You're right. And it's tough. And it's tough to tell a grown man, too, who goes, wait, no, I feel good and I want to play that he can't play. That, that's where, you know, it, it is. And I know it, it's scary and concerning, but it also shows you how much he loves the game. And, yes, that's where we got to find this line in the NFL culture, the world, the medical, all of it to where, you know, we can find the line of protecting a guy and, you know, still letting him play. But I, I don't know where that line is, and, and I think we're in the process of still finding it out. The flip side of what he said yesterday came during Super Bowl week when he said the Dolphins never allowed me to go through the concussion protocol normally until after the season was over. They were protecting me from myself there, and my family. Very really nice. Thankful for the Dolphins. So there's there's some mixed messaging there. And it would have been helpful if he had said that again yesterday because and it's look, it's not his responsibility to send a message that's going to resonate through the culture of the lower levels of football, but it's an opportunity to do so. And I just think it's something that we should all be sensitive to. The culture needs to be aligned with the idea of not playing until you're properly and fully cleared to play. And this comment from Super Bowl week takes it even a step farther. Yes, he would have been cleared, but they were still protecting him from 
another potential incident and also protecting themselves. Chris, this is why I was surprised they picked up the fifth year option. Yeah, Tua. I this hear is you. why I'm surprised right. they continue to be committed to him because for the same reason he doesn't want to be the concussion guy, the Dolphins probably don't want to be the concussion team. Every time his head strikes the turf and he has a concussion, what happens? It's the lead of our show. It's the lead of every show. And it shows up on non-sports shows. Nightly News activates. CBS Evening News activates. ABC, whatever they call their nightly news show, activates. They all become interested in this. And I think at a certain point, there's an element of fatigue and weariness that the Dolphins have. We don't want to be the team that has the guy who gets a concussion once a month. On a football field. No. We want a quarterback that doesn't. That's why I thought they would consider all options. And, hey, I like the fact that they're keeping Tua around. And if they can find a way for him to stay healthy and avoid these concussions, the sky's the limit for this team. I get it. But had to be a strong temptation to try to find a guy who's played football for a long time without having that, that season like the one we saw from Tua last year where you have at least two and for those of us with common sense, three concussions. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's – that was a I, – I almost feel like that decision with Tua was bigger than the Dolphins. I, I, I wouldn't be shocked that the – yeah, the NFL was involved in that conversation, and they wanted to make sure the optics of it, you know, look the right way. They didn't want, oh, hey, it's the first weekend of the playoffs, and, oh, hey, star quarterback that everybody likes – Oh, hey, he's down and he's, you know, quivering on the field again because of a concussion. You know, I, I think that was the worst nightmare, and especially when it was only, what, two or three weeks after DeMar Hamlin and all that. So I think it was like, nah, we're not going to let him play. We don't know. But it fights in the it, – it, it goes into the face of some of the comments or the things we said earlier in the show. Well, wait, I thought there was no worries about concussions and being susceptible after a certain point. You know, that's where I, I, I want to say that, too, and go, well, why didn't you let him play? I mean, the concussion was like six weeks before that. Apparently, there's no worry about, you know, post-concussions anymore. It's back to ground zero, and it's totally fine. It's like nothing there. Uh, that's what I want to say in my snarkiness, but, well, no, I think the optics of it no, are really no. the biggest thing that's uh, the issue there. I, I, think it's a fair, I think it's a fair observation, given the fact that at the NFL League office, it's so the VP in charge of health and safety is also the VP in charge of PR. I mean, that doesn't get discussed nearly enough. There should be a firewall between PR and health and safety. In the league office, the same person, Jeff Miller, is in charge of both. And I've mentioned it from time to time, but it really didn't crystallize how much of a problem it is until you were wading through this reality. From a health and, health and safety standpoint, he's good to go. And what are they saying about short week football? Oh, eh, it's Thursday night, Sunday That's night. That's what no I mean. Deal. It's kind no of talking deal. out of no both sides deal. of their mouth here. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, and but, but yeah, w would it really shock anyone to learn that the league put a little pressure on the Dolphins to make sure this guy is not back on the field right. in any way, shape, or form this year. We just had DeMar Hamlin die on the field. And they understand that the magnifying glass is so much stronger right. in the playoffs. That's they, what I'm saying. This yeah. is going to seem like a hard right turn. But Jim Nance said this last week on the SI Media podcast with Jimmy Traina about the Tony Romo criticism it reaches a fever pitch in the playoffs it's not like they had a bunch of meaningless slappy games in the regular season they did the Thanksgiving game that was the most watched game of the regular season and nobody was like all over Tony Romo but in the playoffs everything gets magnified the audience is bigger everything that happens is more scrutinized so hell yes somebody somewhere was thinking yeah and and and, and kudos to them for thinking it we just had this Demar Hamlin thing, right? And we Tua on a Thursday Tua night Tonga early in the year, right? Exactly. Yeah. We we don't need that happening again after he's had two, three concussions this year. We don't need that. We won't have that. Sorry, Dolphins, but there's no way that guy's playing. I don't. I don't think that's some crazy ass conspiracy theory to think that 345's fingerprints oh, weren't over. That this this dynamic he pointed to yes. Super Bowl week that they wouldn't even they wouldn't even let him right. go attempt the protocol. Right. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Well, why not? Why not? If he's cleared, hey, we got this protocol. We brag about it whenever we have to. Hey, this protocol's awesome. Why won't you even let him try? 
because we don't want him on the field. No. Because we don't want it to happen again. Because that's the last thing we need right now. And and I'm not saying it's wrong. We're just trying to understand how it happened. Right. I mean, it's probably smart from the you know greater good of the game. It is the last thing they need. It is yeah. a risk that they shouldn't take. Right. Is it right? Is it fair? Is it proper? Is it fair to the Dolphins? Should Dolphins fans be be happy about the outcome? Probably not. But yeah, no, I they can probably would have wanted to have played that game. I mean, they it was there to be had, yeah. you know. Um, but you're right, and I think that brings us back to, you know, I, I'm with you and something you said like ten minutes ago, and we kind of just glossed over it a little bit. But like shocked, like is like almost an understatement that they gave him the fifth year option. I, it really is. I and we're talking about the guy that you know played what twelve games last year, twelve games the year before that. You know, the year before that was, you know, in and out of the lineup as a rookie or little. It's all been injury related, right? You know, I, th- that I'm I'm shocked. I mean, he got the guy admitted he didn't work hard enough and wasn't prepared enough, and we just give him the fifth year option. I was shocked by that. I really was. And with the injury history alone, I would have been like, wait, no, no, let's let's see if he can go through a full year. We just saw what happened with Daniel Jones. It's not like a total negative if you have a quarterback playing in the last year of his contract and he's got to prove himself that he can be the guy for the future. And within that, like Daniel Jones and Tua, he knows that they like him, but this is just part of the business. Yeah, I, I was really surprised that they gave him the fifth-year option. I thought they'd try to wait it out and see if he could play a full season. My, my thought is this, and I don't mean to suggest that the organization, that the owner is being altruistic in any way yeah. in coming to this conclusion. Now, maybe Mike McDaniel, who we both really like and respect and has, I believe, a high EQ – not IQ, probably high IQ and high EQ, the emotional quotient or emotional intelligence quotient, whatever they call it. I don't know. Yeah. But it's it's separate from being smart. It's being compassionate, having empathy, sympathy, all the good things that make you a good person and understand what other people are going through. I, I frankly think they picked up the fifth year option because two is going through a lot. He's dealt with a lot. He yeah, dealt with getting I think you're right. yanked around over Deshaun Watson. Right. We heard the stories about how how it affected him. And look at yeah. how he played once the Deshaun Watson trade window closed in 2021. I think all things considered. You think now, that's what it was? They didn't want to have, have the, some the year of everybody. There, are they going to be here and all that? Yeah, sorry. Well, I think that I think that the concern, and it's, it's entirely possible there were multiple conflicting motivations. You could have Mike McDaniel saying, we can't do this to this kid. We can't do it. He's, look at what he's given us over the last three years. We can't, we can't have him wondering for all of 2023 whether we want him for 2024. We want to give him that security and that certainty. We need to show him we're behind him. Others in the organization, and this is a more cynical version of it, this is, you know, this guy's going to be no use to us in 2023 if he doesn't know he's fine for 2024. We can't expect him to be, to be even keeled and focused because – Look at what a mess he was the year oh, with that Watson's he didn't up. know whether or not yeah, Sean Watson was point. showing up. Good if point. we make him do, yeah. if we make him go into a contract year and right. he doesn't think we're behind him, he'll be a he's, mess. He's not going to be remotely right. as good as he needs right. to be. Right. I, I I can get behind. And that. it could be both attitudes come together. I think and that they do the. I agree. I I think you could be onto something there. Kind of both of those things together, and then you add on the fact that if we don't give him the fifth year option, it's going to be a constant talking point from the media and everybody, and when's the new contract and all that. So. Yeah, I think we got to the bottom of that. It does. It squashes a lot of that stuff right there. And you're right. It gives Tua some confidence and, okay, wait, you know, they there's no questions. They like me. I don't have to answer some of these tough questions. And you're right. We saw that it, it, it didn't react well with him, with the, the Deshaun Watson, you know, trade rumors and everything else that was going on at that time. And their window's still wide open. It may be even more open this year than it was last year. Last year was the first year. This year is year two, and Tua, for the first time ever, has continuity. And Tyreek yeah. Hill is still one of the best. And Jalen Waddell is coming into his own, and they've made the defense they better. They got Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, they, 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 I mean, they they're need, ready. They need, to, they need to hold it all together this year. And I think one of the ways, well, part of the investment for this year is making the commitment for Tua for next year and then when next year comes we'll worry about what kind of commitment we're going to make if any beyond 2024 hi it's mike florio thanks for watching pft on youtube hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from pro football talk